So uh, let me greet you on our webinar dedicated to di digital risks happen happened in the world in 2020 and uh, the ones we're going we presume to happen in 2021. So first of all, Happy New Year and Merry Christmas uh, successfully passed. So I wish you in this new year much more health and much more happiness to you and your entire families. So I wish all those lockdowns all over the world will end very soon. Uh, I wish you and I believe that this will happen. But, uh, you know, at the same moment, those lockdowns um, happened to be the reason of, like, the most interesting scamming trends which happened in 2020. And uh, so we're going to talk about it today. So my name is Dmitry Tunkin, and I'm responsible here at Group IB for the development of digital risk protection in Europe. So I'm speaking to you from Amsterdam. Um, yep, yeah, so we have a total lockdown here too, and it's a pity for me, and uh, that's why I wish you that all these lockdowns will end. So let's start, let's move forward, and uh, this is a small agenda of our today like discussion. So the things which I'm going to talk about, so the first is scams versus phishing issues. Uh, as you may know, so phishing is a well-recognized, a well-known issue. Uh, lots of cybersecurity companies, lots of regulators like ICANN and other local ones are speaking and are talking and are researching also this topic. But what about scamming issues? Um, you know, not so many. Uh, and I will explain you why. So the second point is uh, evolution of major scam in 2019 because uh, this is the like line which led us to the huge scam in 2020 and uh, a so-called classy scam expansion in which happened also in 2020 and uh, which we presume to be i would say developing and expanding more and more in 2021 so let's start from the main cause uh, from the like overall picture of what happening nowadays in the internet. Uh, so as soon as this coronavirus disaster happened uh, just a year ago, yep. So lots of lockdowns, lots of um, restrictions happened, and many of you guys, many of your customers, maybe um, uh, sorry, may many of uh, your like relatives happened to be locked at home. Um, with uh, like no availability to visit maybe uh, really a local shop, uh, maybe a banking branch, etc. So lots of restrictions, lots of lockdowns, and this uh, definitely led to uh, increase of uh, internet traffic, to the expansion of internet services, to the expansion of uh, the ways of attracting traffic to the pages of like any like companies who are developing their business, who are trying and who are developing their business among the internet. So look at these numbers. Um, so the number of internet users is growing day by day. This is not very interesting, but we just needed to place uh, this column here. But what is really worth mentioning that the number of online stores grew up twice just per the last year and it is really a huge number of online shops so many local stores many local i would say restaurants and cafes many local other like people who were um, like maintaining their businesses only offline started to invent something online and it means that they're not so deep in the case they're not so familiar with these cybersecurity things they don't really know what like what is going on sometimes uh and this is the main reason of our today's webinar so um the second point why those internet services are growing so fast this uh that's the tailored offers so People understood that to grab more traffic, to increase the conversion from those traffic to real like purchases, 
they need to make their offers more tailored. This happened and this led to a kind of a success from 10 to 40 percent of uh, tailored offers uh, are really working and it is like it is awesome. Uh, what about the third main point, the third main number, which is should be mentioned today, that the 40% of sellers are using social networks uh, like Instagram, Facebook, and many others, also local ones, uh, to attract people to their pages, to their stores, so they don't have enough maybe money or enough skills to build a dedicated portal to spread it out all over the internet, so they attract people uh, via social media. This is uh, like the real number and let's move forward. So uh, I think many of you guys uh, are really deep in the case related to the phishing issues. So you are researching those issues day by day, you know that we like Group IB have a really huge experience in uh, investigating and in researching this stuff. And uh, also you may know that there are a lot of ways to automatize the two um, like the process of uh, cheating people with these phishing issues yeah so some specified tools which cover phishing sites uh, websites among the eyes of uh, like cyber company uh, cyber, cyber crime companies are trying to defeat this disaster and many other stuff so uh, all these uh, points are mentioned uh, in our annual report, which pr was produced by Group IB and which is produced by Group IB every year. Not only, of course, phishing issues, but many other uh, interesting and really cool and really deep researches related to any kinds of cybercrime I mentioned there too. So please, you may uh, like proceed via QR code and uh, send a request for getting acquainted with this report. But, you know, uh, what is not mentioned in that report? Uh, that is the topic which I'm going to talk about today, so scam. And uh, let's now try to figure out what is the difference between scams and phishing issues. You know, historically it happened so that the phishing issue was very clear uh, to regulators, to some even uh, law enforcement agencies, to some government structures, to cybersecurity guys. So everybody very rapidly understood that this is a disaster and we need to like do something with uh, this issue. Uh, and what does this mean? This means that, for instance, uh, the phishing has a like certain definition. So it could be read easily on the website of ICANN, also on Wikipedia and uh, on many other websites of local regulators uh, from different uh, regions. So I would say there are like two main points. The first one is the phishing website should be a copy of an original website. Yep. So there is an original website of a bank of a maybe some uh, manufacturing company. It is copied, and this is the first step to be uh, like to call it a phishing disaster. And the second one is that this page should collect your personal data, like uh, your credit card data or maybe login password bunches, so something like that. But what happens if one of these two points uh, is not like applied, is not applicable? Why? What happens if uh, this is a copy of a website, of an original website, but it doesn't collect any data at all. So it is not a phishing disaster. So if you will um, like come to a regulator and ask to enforce this uh, issue like a phishing one, you will be answered that, hey guys, you know, um, honestly speaking, we discovered this issue, we discovered your request, and it is not the phishing issue. So this is maybe somehow trademark usage or something like that, but not a phishing one. Okay, and the third point, which is not mentioned, I would say um, in an official definitions of phishing, but it is presumed to be very often. It is 
the way of using of your data which leaked throughout those phishing websites. So this means that as soon as you got caught and your data leaked, uh, in like very most cases, you won't be cheated at the very moment. Uh, very often your data will be used somewhere in the future, maybe in a day, in two, maybe really in half a year. So uh, it will be like in most of the cases, it will be sold somewhere in the dark web and uh, somewhere in the future, somebody will grab that database and use it for their like uh, spe specific cheating instances. But what goes to scamming? Honestly, phishing is a part of scamming, but uh, due to this historical definition, due to this historical recognition of phishing, we need to separate it today yeah, but, uh, into two parts. On the other hand, scamming, scams, and on the right uh, hand, phishing ones. So what goes to scams? Different kinds of fraudulent websites trying to cheat you. Uh, which are not trying to gather your personal credit, uh, personal data, uh, which are not trying to get your credentials, which are not mimicking sometimes uh, to an official website, but sometimes they do. And so-called uh, cloned websites, they're not classified like phishing issues, but they're like the first step of phishing ones. Also, there are lots of uh, scam and fraud related to contextual advertisements, to rugby mobile applications, and so on. And one more tip, which is really important here, that all like scamming efforts presume the direct interaction between a fraudster, between a scammer and a user. So in most of the cases, as soon as you got caught, you will be got cheated. So this is like the uh, most um, happened uh, thing. So let's now look at the picture of how the like phishing crimes are growing day by day. And here you may see that this is a really strong part, a really big part of the overall high tech crime, which is like happening. Um, every day all over the world. So 16% it is a really huge number. But typical scam is happening much more often, like I would say three times more often than uh, the original canonical phishing uh, issues. And moreover, the speed of growing of these uh, scamming issues is a little bit higher than the speed of growing of the number of phishing issues from year to year. And uh, that's why scamming issues are really worth paying attention to, not only by uh, legal teams, of course, because they really detected those um, efforts of scam of scammers to use some logos of their brands, etc., but also by cybersecurity guys, because, you know, their level of skills uh, which are presumed to be in mind in hands of, of modern scammers is becoming the same to their hacking uh, like skills which are presumed to be in the hands of um, a phishing, phishing scammer, yeah? phishing fraudster, phishing bad guy. So uh, let's make a recap, let's make an overview of what happened in 2019, and then let's look at what is happening now. So, in 2019, we discovered a scheme which was called by us like the White Rabbit. Uh, why did we call it so? Because, you know, maybe, not maybe, but of course, definitely all of you guys know the story, the fairy tale written by Lewis Carroll, which was called Alice in Wonderland. And at the very beginning of the book, so just like two first pages, it was described that there was a little girl who was sitting somewhere near the river in a very hot weather, reading her boring book, and uh, the environment like around her was very typical. Nothing interesting was happening anywhere. Nothing happening, uh, interesting was happening either in the book or 
in the environment. So she was uh, getting very tired, very bored, and uh, like her eyes were seeking for anything to be like to get interested in. And at that very moment, she like uh, sees a white rabbit, but not the typical one, but the white rabbit with a in a hat, in a jacket, with a pocket watch, uh, saying something about brushing, etc. And uh, that's make her interested. So just compare this very boring environment and this very interesting and non-typical rabbit. So that's why she decided to follow it. She followed him, uh, she followed this white rabbit and uh, she got into a rabbit hole, which after that led her in like to some kind of experience, uh, to some kind of interesting and uh, sometimes really dangerous uh, future. And this is pretty the same to the mind of the modern internet users. For the past five years, you know, internet became very typical for us. Nobody gets like shocked of being in the internet, of using it day by day. And each of us sitting on his, like at his desk, maybe at school, maybe at the university, maybe uh, at your working desk. So each of us day by day doing our routine job, we're seeking for some interesting videos, advertisements, giveaways for something. And if this something attracts our attention, we will follow it. So this is the approach like of people's mind on which these cameras are based on. So uh, look at the screen and you may see two big parts, the left one and the right one, uh, the traffic attraction stage and the attacking stage. But what is really worth mentioning here is the middle part, the really second big part, which is uh, like combining the left one, the first one and the third one, the, the right one together. This is the multiply redirect part. So let's now go a little bit deeper into the scheme. On the left part, you may see lots of channels for traffic attraction. And moreover, in this scheme, uh, most of these channels are used simultaneously. So for instance, um, these cameras are trying to attract people via WhatsApp messages, uh, like send out direct messages, messages to some groups in WhatsApp and Telegram and some other messages. Also um, some contextual advertisements in uh, search engines, also some advertisements in uh, social networks like Instagram, Facebook and, and many others. At the same moment, all of these attempts of attracting you guys to follow the white rabbit will consist of a legal brand, of a big brand, a well-known brand, uh, maybe locally known, maybe worldwide known, it doesn't matter. And moreover, it doesn't mean that in all of the, if like it is a one scheme which is trying to grab some traffic via all those channels, it doesn't mean that just one brand, the certain brand will be used via all the sources. No, it doesn't, no. Uh, they use like different brands, they use it fully automatically. So for, for, for instance, their WhatsApp, it could be some retail brands for direct email send outs. It could be some banking brands, etc. So it depends on their like time of the year, it depends on many factors. What happens next? After you like decide to follow this white rabbit, you click the button, you click, you click the link, you were suggested, um, you will be followed to a certain website which will follow you via multiply redirect chain uh, to a page. On this page, there might be a giveaway, there might be uh, a survey, there might be anything else, so some suggestion to you, some call to action. At this stage, they will, uh, they will ask you to leave your maybe um, mobile phone number, maybe to leave your Instagram account, um, 
ID, maybe social network ID, maybe uh, email, and that's it. So at this very moment, this stage ends. They will say thank you, bye bye. So see you soon. We will uh, like get in touch with you later. And on the third part, on the last part of the scheme, you will get a notification via this uh, like channel which you with, with, via this content uh, contact sorry which you left uh, through this page which was um, suggested you after the multiply red red chain. So it could be a message via WhatsApp, it could be a message via social networks, it could be an email, uh, and this message will consist of a link leading you to a phishing website or maybe to a scamming website, so a link to a direct send out of money to somebody's wallet or really phishing website. What, what is important here that this is a so-called 2.0 phishing uh, so it won't consist of any brands any logos uh, on its pages so it won't be looking like an official page of um, a bank or maybe of a um, some company anywhere uh, anyway this is the huge deal because you may easily detect the left part of the scheme. You may easily detect this traffic attraction stage, those sources which are suggesting you like different brands and lots of the companies are really doing it day by day, finding lots of mentions via Instagram, Telegram, uh, Facebook, in their like webs on the web surface, on the regional websites, etc. So lots of companies uh, really do that. But the problem is, as soon as you try to combat all those resources which are really using the brand's logo, uh, this will change nothing because the phishing disaster or the scamming website will still be alive because it is covered throughout this redirex chain. It is covered uh, of the eyes like of cybersecurity guys, from the client's uh, eyes, from, from the company's eyes, and now I'm going to explain you how it is happening. So, why this multiply redirect chain is so important? Because uh, after passing multiply redirects, multiply websites, you don't really like see it with your own eyes. So it it is happening very fast. You will provide you will be provided by a specified link, and this is just a huge link. Okay, it happens very often to the modern internet portals when you are provided with a link to some consisting of some refers to CDN services, etc. But at the same moment, let's look, uh, I would say cautiously, let's um, like dive deeper into this link. And you can see that at the very beginning, it is like S10XS. So this is the name of the device for which we were searching for via Google search. Then DNS, DNS, it is not the domain name server. It is the name of the uh, electronics retailer who was uh, like presumed to suggest this mobile phone device. After that, there is Windows 2010.0, etc. This is the version and the name of the operational system on the virtual machine, which we were using for this attempt. After that, they, there is like ICP. This is Internet Service Provider name. Uh, and after that, your IP address, which was uh, used, which was given to this certain laptop at the moment when we were trying to connect to the internet okay so this is somehow typical to what happened to phishing guys so they also try to cover their phishing websites from the eyes of corporate holders from the eyes of legal authorities etc but gents we're not talking about phishing now this is not like typical phishing this is scam in most of the cases they do not steal your credentials they make you to pay them directly and additionally you can see that 
above the link, here is the key. So there is hash key which consists of a timestamp. What does this mean? This means that this particular link will be available only for you, only with a refer to this certain search query, uh, only at this certain moment. So after you like will click this link, this will be alive for three or five minutes. You will fulfill the forms on this link. You will like leave your data. You will send them money. Um, not maybe send money, but make a purchase. And after that, this will be dead. So if you understand that uh, something went wrong, if you decide to get in touch with any authorities to ask the help to defeat the issue, they won't be able to discover this link. They will say, tell you, hey guys, uh, we presume it was a typical phishing and it's dead. So unfortunately you got caught, but it happens. So, uh, so sorry, man, there is nothing we can do for you now. And uh, here are the results of the scheme which happened in 2019. So the probability of detection of scamming issues reduced significantly. The response pro process became much more different because we uh, started to need to explain to all those authorities, yes, how to like research this issue. We have our own third team at Group IB, and uh, you know that there are awesome guys. They're defeating lots of phishing activities day by day. Most of those activities they're defeating fully automatically, so there is just like a two minutes uh, procedure to send an automated request to some regulators, and they will like uh, process this request because we uh, have an authorized third team. But as soon as they face with such things like this, they will say, hey, we need, we need some more clarification, we need some more evidence. And if you didn't collect this evidence, if you are not deep in the case, you will never be available to get this, uh, to give them the explanation of how it works, why they really need to pay their attention to this scheme, etc. So this leads that all those resources are are of time more and more in time and um, of course more and more victims uh, got caught via this scheme so this is how it worked in 2019 and um, this was a kind of a recap let's now move forward to 2020 the past year um, as you may see here is the list of channels for traffic attraction um, like divided by the level of the usage among internet users for traffic attraction. And uh, the first place is social media advertising, then email, social media messages, etc. And uh, it is like a really interesting list. So, for instance, uh, contextual advertis uh, advertisements yep, in search engines it's only the fifth place. Yeah? So people are starting to provide their customers with more tailored offers. They're trying to talk to them directly, to interact with them. And that's why these channels are growing much more higher than the, all those like um, search, angel, uh, search engine advertisements or social media advertisements uh, too. So. Talking about the scheme with White Rabbit, let's look at the increase, yes, in uh, numbers. So in 2019, we have, uh, we had, sorry, around 80 domain names, around 80 websites worldwide. So this is not a huge number of websites at all. So this is not a huge number of issues even for just one country. Uh, and per one, domain name per one website. There were about 30 brands uh, laying down on its pages to which people were transferred, to which people were led during that uh, multiplier redirect chains. Yep, according to the interests, according to the things uh, for which those people were looking for, considering their 
uh, geolocation, their mobile device, oh, sorry, their user, user agent, etc. But in 2020, these numbers grew up like enormously. So, for instance, for the number of domain names, we uh, detected more than 300 of domain names worldwide, and this means that they don't uh, they don't die in like a couple of days. They really last too long. Why they like last for too long? I will explain you just on the next slide. But uh, what is worth mentioning here that the number of brands um, located on one website, laying down on its pages, is now more than 100. And about the division of Russian brands and uh, uh, worldwide recognized brands. In 2019, it was just half of Russian, half of worldwide brands. And considering the number of average 30 brands on like one website, so it's just around 15 international worldwide brands without like any targeting to a specific region or some something like that. But in 2020, the, the division is really different. So the biggest part, 90% of uh, brands which were laying down on the domain name, yep, on average, were not Russian based. Yep, so worldwide recognized brands and especially some local brands which are well known only in some specific regions. And I will show you some examples later. Uh, this is some interesting things too. So this is the top five of websites uh, divided by their monthly audience, only unique users, uh, according to Alexa rank. So you may just try to copy any of these uh, websites and to check it via Alexa. And uh, this is, this is, I would say, really sad because Alexa can see such activities which were not caught by any of authorities, which were not caught by any of cybersecurity companies, which like to which nobody did pay attention to. And uh, the first one, yeah, the top one website gathered monthly more than two and a half million of users. And on average, uh, out of all those 300 websites, the average number of unique users per month is 300,000. So this is really a huge number. Also considering that uh, some local websites of some local like shops, markets, entities uh, gather not more than maybe 100,000 of users per month. And let's now talk about technical side a little bit more deeper. So uh, let's divide this scheme, which was like described as a white rabbit scheme previously. Let's look at the parts, at technical parts of this scheme. So the first one is traffic and the traffic attraction uh, tools, traffic attraction channels are the same. So. Of course, ear by ear, the like way of traffic attraction is changing, and there are some many improvements uh, happening to this uh, sphere each year. But what was changing is really this: the second and the third columns. So basically, uh, this redirect option was not included into this scheme, and is very typical to all like phishing issues when uh, lots of companies are trying to monitor contextual advertisements uh, seeking for some phishing websites and as soon as a person clicks on their contextual advertisement place somewhere in the search engine result yet this person would be lead uh, would be led directly to this uh, phishing website so this is a very basic option these what worked really the same to scamming issues to some false partnership websites to some uh, to some websites which were mimicking uh, mimicking um, to official pages but asked for some payments direct maybe debits etc 
it's not interesting at all. So everybody know about this problem. Everybody try to monitor it. And uh, we at Group IB built this monitoring tool. Very, I would say many years ago, and it is working really brilliantly. But what happened like in 2019, at the end of 2018 probably, uh, this scheme with White Rabbit, it's started to develop, to, to being developed, it's starting to expand. And uh, the thing here is that users from these contextual advertisements, from those links placed in social networks, they are uh, gathered, they are like led, not to the end resource, not to the end portal, but they led, led via a special server, which is like maybe called advertisement server, which makes a decision to which destination to send the user afterwards. So this is the core of the creation of this multiply redirects chain. And um, it works in a combination of getting information about the user, about the user's habits, about the user's a laptop, about the user's interests, etc. So many things which uh, are done typically by owner of uh, like brilliant, brilliantly made website. So lots of information collected and the end page is tailored to the uh, request of the user that is specified for these certain activities, for this uh, for his certain needs. But what did happen in 2019? Um, there was somehow specification of the end page, yeah, to which the person was led to. Yes, it was. So, for instance, if the person was uh, seeking for a somehow um, maybe internet provider, yep, so SIM card, purchasing a SIM card, purchasing an internet, some, some something like that. Uh, and he or she, yep, saw a contextual advertisement suggesting some kind of uh, these services, he will be uh, transferred via this multiply redirect chain, he will get this um, personal link and he will be transferred to a page consisting of like the name of the certain uh, telecom brand. Yeah, this is what happened th uh, at that time. At the, at the very moment, if this person tries to reach out to Google, or sorry, not to Google, but of course to search on their search engine for a certain name of the certain telco provider, yep. At the same moment, uh, if the bad guys uh, had this brand among the brands laying down on the pages of their specially made scamming website, in such a way, there would be a contextual advertisement dedicated to this brand in particular, and he will be forwarded to this brand, to this page. But if not, there will be nothing. There will be no contextual advertisements made by these scammers. And the big definition in 2020 that they have built this system much more efficient. They increased the power, they increased the number of brands. And now they adjust, not, the, not really adjust, they suggest to the user uh, some brands from the certain industry, some brands relevant from the uh, to the certain search query, to the certain like movement of their um, user, but uh, maybe not the same to which the user was seeking for. So this is really awesome, and uh, moreover, at the third stage there is kind of some addition which uh, makes this skin much more scammy than phishing or some other stuff of uh, disasters. So let's now look at the 2020 scheme of how it works now. So on each of three parts, on the first and the second, on the third, like traffic attraction, link personalization, and content personalization, there are some improvements. So on the first traffic attraction stage, as uh, 
I, I've told you about the tailored offers by like local shops, by big companies on the internet, targeted to certain audience of users. The same ha happened to scammers. The offers started to be much more targeted, yeah, much more tailored, and um, this lead to this narrowing, yep, yeah, this lead to increase in cover in conversion to their pages. The second one, the link personalization, their uh, like software on their service, advertising service, um, became much more sophisticated. So now it, it is handling much more sources, much more users trying to reach out to uh, their end websites. It is uh, collecting much more data uh, about the user, and uh, it is. It is made especially for adjusting the last page, the end page, for the user needs. And if we look at the last page as a like originally uh, original user, what changed for us, like for a uh, common user? Two things. The first one, which I described just on the previous slide, so uh, we will be offered some additional websites if in the bunch of brands uh, laying down on this server there won't be the certain brand which we was which we were seeking for and at the same moment uh, if it is possible the web forms on the website will be auto fulfilled with all the details collected on that second stage I mean the name uh, your like first name and second name collected from your uh, browser. Yep. Your search engine uh, request divided into parts, in, in, into parts, and I will explain, uh, not explain, but I will show you an example how it happens. Some other data related to you, to your region, to your country, to your language, to your age, maybe. So lots of params. Now let's look at how it works on an uh, example. Imagine. Your name is Dmitri, and you are living in Amsterdam, and you are trying to get urgently by the end of the day, maybe really today, so the 12th of January, to Dubai. Due to a business trip, so you are having a really serious meeting, appointment there, and by the end of the, uh, of the day, you need to get to Dubai. So, uh, from your experience, you know that uh, not so many uh, airplanes, not so many flights are uh, happening each day from Amsterdam to Dubai in direct way, or maybe there are some other regions. That's why you're like grabbing your bag and rushing to the airport. Okay, so it is happening. Uh, you are in metro and you start to Google, you start to search for some tickets to this flight. So you will type. Um, the day, the destination, the departure, the time maybe, so you will do it. And uh, at the very first row, you will see some advertisements. Here are on the slides of premiumticketsoffer.com, but uh, as for the first one, you may see that AD, yeah, the mark that it is an adver advertisement, they are marked with bold and it is placed at the very beginning of the advertisement but for the second one oh, sorry for the second one it is not done in the same way and you really can consider that this is just one of the first uh, results in this search engine uh, in this on this search engine page okay so you will click on it you will get this link okay very typical link and uh, look at it so the personalization um, became much more tailored. So it is now covered with the hash overall. So it is uh, very, I would say, difficult to go deeper into this hash and to try to figure out what is covered under it. So if you are trying to get uh, via this link via your mobile phone or in a rush, you will never have this chance. And you are transferred to this website. It is made in a way 
uh, like the appearance of a website of a well-known company, worldwide recognized company, which will definitely uh, give you an opportunity to get to Dubai, of course. So, and at this stage, here is a form, uh, which is consisting of departure, destination, your maybe name, your surname, date, time, and after that, you just one button. Purchase, you will click this button and you will be suggested a really fully secured form of like banking payment. This would be a really banking payment form. So there is like no, no, not of the phishing form. Uh, so you will be asked to make a purchase. You will do it. And after that, you will get nothing. So this is how it works. This link will be available only for users of the certain internet provider. Uh, in this certain region, mostly at this certain time, and because uh, you are in a rush and all the like forms were fulfilled automatically and uh, you can understand this is like your name, your surname, maybe you can uh, adjust those params. So everything was done very, rep uh, very conveniently. Uh, this is just a test, one click purchase, you will follow it. And this, as like the practice, uh, the practice shows it really happens very often. So uh, let's now move to a very distant, I would say, case, because it is connected to youngsters, to young boys and girls who are very deep in those like bloggers, videos among Instagram and TikTok posting. As you may know, there are lots of giveaways, lots of bloggers suggesting some goods for um, making some actions, sometimes enough stupid actions. Sometimes they ask you just to follow them. Sometimes they ask you to make some, uh, maybe to grab some videos. Sometimes they ask you to pass a giveaway. So this is very typical. And the way they send these notifications is really different. Sometimes they do it via uh, like direct messages in Instagram. Sometimes they do it uh, via like spreading some information all over their messages. Sometimes it is really email send out and many others. So in this particular case, there is a send out which was sent by a Gmail. Uh, account and uh, I believe that nobody of you guys will be caught by this scheme but this is a real working scheme and we know at least 10 or 20 people who got caught via it so uh, there is a kind of a giveaway uh, from Instagram suggesting some money you need to follow the link and to try it if you maybe uh, be so lucky to get the price Again, the personalized link, not so interesting. Uh, on the right, you can see the redirect chain uh, from which this uh, particular user was led to their end resource. On the end resource, you may see that this is really a kind of a lottery. So you need to try some of the prizes to open some of the boxes. Uh, and of course, for the first two steps, you, will, you won't gain any success, but for the like, third box, you will definitely grab some um, success, grab some maybe money, maybe something else. And at this point, what is very interesting, um, for these Instagram giveaways, they usually, uh, usually sorry, uh, use not money prizes, but the way of like, hey, sorry, you didn't, um, you was not so lucky to win the money prize but you want something which can help you to grab some more money in the future via your Instagram account to attract you some more users, some more followers on your Instagram account. So please, here is our automatic bot. You need just to mention your account name and your password to this, like on our page, this will be transferred to our bot and this bot will start to handle your account. He will start to attracting some more followers fully automatically to your account up to 10,000 or 100,000 new followers just in one uh, hour. 
and you know this is a huge industry and people really believe in that so they really insert their the name of their account the password of the account and after that they are started um not started they start losing their accounts and uh, fraudsters try to negotiate with them try to uh retrieve uh, their accounts for money etc so this is how it works um the most interesting topic here that it is it is not really relevant to huge companies to b2b businesses this is mostly relevant to some local companies but at the same moment uh, among our cases related to such instagram accounts there were probably three or five cases relevant to business instagram accounts of really large companies so people responsible for those instagram accounts decided to attract some more traffic to decided to attract some more uh, followers and they really got caught into this trap and after that we really need to make some movements to get those accounts back to those companies so this is just how it works with the uh, youngsters with these modern stuff modern tools modern audience but uh, what is what is the thing I need to avoid you about. So this is global expansion. As you may know from the cybercrime topic, from all those hacking groups, all those inventors of different uh, phishing tools, phishing automation uh, roulettes, etc. That <laughs> I would say everything which was invented in Russia will go worldwide. So these guys are really hungry. Mm -hmm they really want to grab some more money and this is really relevant to this scamming disaster so this is the real case which happened in singapore thanks to our singaporean guys hello guys thank you so much for providing us with this case and um, this is the i would say really brilliant example of how this white rabbit scheme works so uh, this is a typical Singaporean telco provider and uh, one day the users of this provider uh, clicking on some advertisements, clicking on some links sent to them via emails, via direct email send outs, yeah, uh, which were constructed in a way like an official letter of this telco provider. They got these um, pages. This is just a typical survey. And I would say survey is just one part, one branch of this white rabbit scheme. And also you may Google for LATSI group, which was uh, again uh, located by our Singaporean colleagues, uh, which tried to capture uh, and to cheat people in Singapore, in APEC, and also in European countries, especially in Italy. So these uh, guys, they used as a way to grab the contact, a contact of the person, they used service. So the same stage of traffic attraction, the same stage of uh, getting money of uh, the like, user's pocket, but after they multiply redirects, there is a survey. And that's it so there is a survey dear customer you will be able to win a prize please move forward answer our questions and maybe you will be so lucky to grab a new apple iphone 11 pro or samsung galaxy s 12 uh, 20. of course so this looks like a typical giveaway after a survey and it's quite okay many companies practice really legal uh, companies practice this approach uh so after these people passed this survey they were asked to leave their mobile phone number or email again please consider that uh, everything started from the direct message to the uh, like account in uh, social networks or messengers or email but after that they were asked again to leave some like data some contacts to get in touch with them later if they win this prize and after that they got 
uh, like separate offer, a separate notification via this contact saying, hey, man, you are lucky, you won the prize, and we are really ready to ship uh, this good to you. But the only thing you need to do is to pay for the shipment. It's not so expensive. It's only about two uh, Singaporean dollars. So it's like a few, just a fee for uh, some postal stuff. Okay, and people really did that. But the thing that uh, it is mentioned that the amount to be paid is just two years. The by they send it, they sent some more money, starting from twenty up to sometimes five hundred of dollars. So this was a direct debit. So they just click on the button, OK. They approve this transaction, and they really didn't pay much attention to the results some mentioned in this web form because the web form was really legal it was a really legal payment form so they just sent those money directly to scammers they didn't pay attention because they were so happy so full of enthusiasm that they won that prize an awesome iphone wow wonderful and they really didn't pay so much attention to that and that's why they were unable to retrieve that money because as soon as they tried to get in touch with their bank to say, hey guys, we were got cheated, they were told, hey, you just sent money officially. You click the button, okay, you did it by yourself. You passed through all the verification processes, you did it. So we are not able to help you. Um, so this telco company, after our press release on the Lotsi group, so they get in touch with us and we did a huge work for them. Honestly speaking, this is the white rabbit scheme. This is not the scheme which could be easily, very easily detected by any of monitoring tools. Also, you need to be really deep in the case. You need to be uh, familiar with the approaches these cameras use, with the tools, um, like with how these tools work with the places where these tools are sold. And that's why we like were ready to defeat this problem. So we used our internal tools, which helped us to investigate uh, this issue. We found out more than, no, sorry, not more, but uh, exactly 50 of uh, similar domain names, uh, which were ready to be pushed to the internet to collect some data to grab some more users and to cheat people on behalf of that telco company and within 24 hours we defeated all the network so this is what happened in singapore uh, also i can uh, tell you that this is what happening all over the world but For the last year, the amount of brands increased significantly, and here are some examples. I would say that some of these brands are really well known for you. So there are telco companies, internet service providers. Uh, sometimes, uh, sometimes there are internet retailers. Yep, some electronic devices retailers. From different regions yep so you can see this is for, for instance this is Vodafone Italy previously there was uh, there were some examples from uh, Britain etc some uh, examples from Norway uh, as for Amazon you may see here that they tried their best and adjusted the page in much more good manner than the previous ones some more some more and, you know, uh, I have more than two or three thousand of examples uh, in my pocket on, on my laptop regarding this scheme. So this is how it works. And the main topic here that you're not like covered with protection if you only try to do this basic monitoring of contextual advertisements you also need to be deeper in the case and the point here is this is not the phishing guys so they have different forums different chats different groups 
they are not like caught by cybersecurity officers now. So please keep your eyes open. Um, yep, I'm told that I'm being a little bit out of the time. So let's move a little bit faster. So this is classic scam trend. It's a little bit much more, um, a little bit um, shorter than the previous one. So it appeared just last year. What well, is called classic scam because it is connected to classic fields, classifieds, and uh, um, it is connected to the direct scam, which presumes direct interaction between a scammer and the person who is cheated. Uh, so in 2018, scammers who, who were trying to cheat somebody on marketplaces were just standalone warriors. They tried to reach out to their victims directly to do everything on their own with their own hands. And what happened in 2019, at the end of 2019 and what was happening during the whole 2020 is uh, some tools appeared and this uh, like led to the division of the scammers into two groups. The topic starters, so the guys who invented those tools and the workers, the guys who were using those tools to cheat people. Also, there is a revenue share program with which uh, shares some money grabbed by a, uh, from a victim between workers and topic starters. Topic starters get the less part of the money, workers usually get the biggest part of the money, but uh, you know, topic starters at the end, anyway, they're winning and this is very interesting why. So this is an example, a marketplace, Lebencoin.fr, so very popular among French users. And there, there is just a typical uh, advertisement on it. Let's now imagine of what uh, the scammer, the worker, the worker, it is really important, is doing while trying to cheat the victim. So I need to go to um, to like to go throughout a marketplace to choose a certain uh, advertisement which I love so much. Uh, I need to copy the link. Then I just everything I need a um, Telegram messenger installed on my uh, mobile device and a special bot to which I get access via getting uh, in touch with the topic starter. So. I will pass the link to this uh, advertisement in this bot and this bot will form for me a special uh, link which looks pretty the same to the original Lebencoin website but you can see here this is lebencoin.cf and the very uh, last message yep link for mammoth lebencoin.cf uh, and this link leads you to the form of uh, getting money so uh, how the scheme works um, from the side of interaction between the scammer and the user and the victim. I will go into that direct messaging with the owner of this advertisement. We'll tell him, hey guy, I'm very um, like happy to grab this bookshelf. So I'm really looking forward, it, uh, forward to, to grabbing it. So I've already transferred the money to you via this internal internal lab and coin mechanism. So it is fully securable. Please just follow this link and grab the money in your pocket, in your, uh, in your wallet. And uh, after that, please uh, ship this bookshelf to me. So this person, this is just a short overview of this uh, dialogue. Of course, it lasts for much more sentences, but uh, as a matter of fact, in the most of the cases this person will click the link and will click the button obtain 500 euros yeah. for this uh purchase it is 500 euros but of course there are like much more issues uh, for lower prices so he will click this button and after that he will get again a form which will uh like presume the direct money sending to somebody yep yeah, but he won't Pay attention to this. Yep, so he will fulfill the form, he will click the OK button, he will be asked if he is sure that he is going to send 500 euros to somebody, he will click yes. So that's it, the money flow away. And uh, as you may see, the payment to the scammers may happen even twice. How can it happen? Uh, very easy. 
after I got understood that uh, got the understanding that I was caught. I will get back to this chat. I will try to push my anger to this scammer to say him, hey, you just cheated me. I spent money. What is going on? Get my money back, etc. And he will do this the certain exercise one more time. He will send me another link saying, hey, you know, uh, uh, this situation is not looking good for me, so I decided to get in touch with tech guys from Levenkind. That's why uh, they sent me this link. I retrieved money uh, from my side because I don't want to use the uh, platform uh, for like sending money to you. I will do it directly by cash. No, uh, no worries. Uh, you can use the same link to grab your money back to you and everything will be okay. And uh, by the end of the day, I will come up to your place by myself for this bookshelf, etc. So many, many, many words. And this man again will use this link. So again, he will uh, click this link. He will insert his credentials, click OK button and transfer money to somebody. And the point is that this money send out happens directly to a special banking account made by the topic starter and after that this topic starter shares the revenue to the worker and what about the workers the average age of workers involved into this scheme into this scheme all over the world is about 16 years old so there are really young uh boys and girls who are like uh, thinking that this is a kind of a game. They are not committing any crimes. They're just playing, they're just cheating people. It's funny. They grab some money to buy maybe some new Apple airports or something like that, or maybe for McDonald's or to go into the, to the cinema. And what is worth mentioning here that they really leave their real credit card data to this worker, to the, oh, sorry, to this topic starter. So he sends money directly to their banking cards. And in a, like, in a future, in some period of time, it always happens so that this topic starter provides the local police departments with this data related to these young youngsters. Yep. Uh, this is how they call it feeling, uh, cleaning the fields. Yep. Uh, they say that ye, they need to give some workers to police uh, departments because they uh, get some requests from people, from citizens, and they really see that something strange is going on, and they got this information, they do arrests, etc., and that's it. But the key core, which uh, is covered behind the scene, the topic starter, he's not uh, like caught... Uh, he's not an animal, uh, de-anonymized. He is not uh, the, like any police departments, any legal authorities are not interested in capturing him. So, and this scheme also expands all, all, all over the world, in, even in Romania, Bulgaria, and all other regions. So we have lots of examples for APEC, for MEA, for not for USA at this point, uh, at this moment, but uh, we presume that this scheme also will expand there because this is very easy for young people to get just a telegram boat bought and to start this cheating also uh sorry for like the screenshots in russian language but this is uh just an attempt which we located in at the very end of 2020 uh these topic starters they're trying to invent the same tools for payment systems and Moreover, for all of you guys who were thinking that, okay, this is for marketplaces, if we are not connected to a marketplace, if we are not uh, suggesting something on the marketplace, this is not related to us, but yes, it is. So this is, again, one more example, which was captured by our analysts at the very end of 2020. It is also related only to big Russian banking systems, as of now, but in 2021, we, pre we presume that this uh, approach would be transferred to like dozens of well-recognized worldwide banking systems. So this is Telegram bots, which form uh, digital receipts, digital pages of official banks. And via these um, pages, 
you may make people send money directly to your account via their like really systems of these certain banks. So this is what we presume to happen in 2021. Also to capture this activity, uh, it won't be like, you will never be um, successful in capturing this activity while trying to monitor similar domain names. No, this content is not posted on the similar domain names for these particular issues related to banks. This is uh, going around, like circling around these tools invented by topic starters, uh, which are placed in Telegram, on some forums, and all, only about that. To defeat this issue, you need to get much more deeper in, in that tools. You need to block the infrastructure related to that tools. And in such a way, I think you will defeat the problems. So, uh, sorry, I will just take some more of your time about trends and forecasts. As you may understood during my speech, so there are lots of scamming trends targeted to certain users which are developing not on the same platforms on which like phishing uh, tools are placed on. So this is a big industry which should be covered by Mm, I would say intelligence, of course, which should be covered by analysts, which should should be covered by what we call digital risk protection services. Yep, and at the very moment, lots of the tools which were in, uh, which were in, uh, invented in 2020, they will expand very rapidly in 2021, because unfortunately we're still facing with lots of lockdowns. This uh, vaccine. Uh, spreading all over the world hasn't yet uh, became so massive and uh, I think that by the like middle of this year we will we'll be still sitting uh, at our homes and uh, doing lots of activities maintaining lots of activities via internet uh, and internet providers and that's why our forecast is that these trends which we mentioned in this presentation in this webinar they will expand much more, um, much more faster, much more bigger. They will grow day by day, month by month. And uh, lots of companies worldwide in all the distant regions, in all the re like local regions, will face with all this stuff. Uh, but if you want some knowledge, we have it, and we are really happy to come up with these uh, activities with 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 these issues uh, together with you guys. Uh, so the main thing that you know there is a typical approach to cyber security. Uh, it is a well recognized approach. You know that there are lots of problems that are classified. They have that uh, has certain definitions, etc. But at the very moment, there are lots of youngsters, young problems like scam, which is growing day, day by day and becoming older and much more aggressive, much more sophisticated, much more organized. And as you may, um, as you may saw, we call this class, uh, class scam as SaaS, I mean, scam as a service, yeah? So they're not only scammers, standalone scammers, they are really, organized groups of scammers developing some tools uh, involved in money laundering, uh, really using the same approaches as the big guys from um, other um, dark industries like hacking industry do. Yep. And that's why you need also to see not only on the things which are behind your, uh, which are like under the ground, yes, uh, not only on the leaves of this tree, but also you need to look into the roots. You need to dig more deeper to be aware of all of these scamming activities. That's the key to defeating the problem. 
That's why we have our digital risk protection team, digital risk protection solution combined with our analysts, making lots of researches, doing lots of activities, trying to combat, to eliminate all those uh, sophisticated schemes, uh, as well as like they do their just regular job of uh, eliminating some brand abusing issues, etc. So that's it for now, and uh, thank you so much for joining the webinar. Uh, just a second, I'm trying. Yep, I'm trying to find out my mouse, and I will be happy to answer your questions. Yeah, so. Yep, so. Um, do you think we will have the same threat method of threat this year, or there will be an advanced way of phishing scam? Uh, I think this is the question which um, was answered during my summary. Uh, so we presume that. There won't be any of so huge improvements in these tools uh, in 2021 because the potential of the tools invented at the end, at the very end of 2020, is not uh, covered yet. So it is, it will be still growing, it will be still expanding, and uh, we will see more and more requests from uh, customers of different companies. Uh, all over the world during to this uh, scheme. Yeah, so uh, a copy of presentation, you know, I'm not sure that uh, we will be able to share the copy, but I think we will definitely share the video of the, of the recorded webinar itself. So also, Okay, so there is another question regarding the record, and I think that I answered it. Okay, some some time for more questions. Sorry, guys, for for the delay with this with this webinar. I think this is the reason that we're not able to answer all, all of your questions because you need to leave. So anyway, thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, we are really glad to like share our knowledge and we, if you have any uh, questions related to this topic in particular or to any topic related to cybercrime, please contact us and uh, uh, being sure that we will help you. So thank you so much and uh, see you on the later webinars and uh, I hope that in some future we will see each other with our own eyes. Thank you and bye-bye.